Boy, 2021 has been really crazy. We've had Log4j for cybersecurity people. We've had Facebook rename themselves to Meta. We've had the NFT become a thing. People are selling their paintings for billions of dollars. But for cybersecurity, if you are a cybersecurity leader or a CISO or a head of security, you may be wondering what is gonna be around in your plate in 2022 that you should look out for or probably should add into your cybersecurity plan for 2022. Let's get into this video. I'm gonna talk about this in three different categories. First one being growth areas in cybersecurity. Second one being breaking new ground. Third one being dead areas of cybersecurity. At least I hope they would be dead in 2022. The first one I will talk about in growth area is identity and access management. Now, identity access management has been a really simplified or at least oversimplified version for a long time where people just assume it's whether Ashish can authenticate into a Facebook portal or anything else and whether he can authorize into it. But we all know nowadays it's not just a single web application or it's not just a single website that Ashish is logging into. In any organization that he move into, there's a lot of SaaS applications. There's a lot of applications that are basically not even hosted by you. You're sharing responsibility hint, hint, cloud providers. And you also have resources which are probably in-house, but you require a login of its own. Identity and access management is something that's gonna be definitely highlighted quite a bit. It is a growing problem. And now with zero trust and a lot of work, people working from home, it would get a lot more attention in 2022. The next thing I'll talk about is asset management. Something that the Log4j has taught us after weeks of multiple updates that kept coming in that, hey, patch this, or maybe this is another one patch. So we had four weeks of patching that was available from Log4j. That has made people realize that I don't have a clear picture of what libraries are being used by my software, my product, so I need to find a way to find out application dependency. I also need a way to find out what softwares am I using and what libraries do they depend on? What kind of security burden should I be looking at? One way to get this really popular is the SBOM or Software Bill of Material, which was released by NIST and it is getting really popular. And in 2022, I imagine a lot of non-US government entities would also start using SBOM because it's a great way to identify what dependencies exist in your product. I guess the easiest way to explain it, when you go to a supermarket and you look at a jar of milk or any other food item when you flip over if you look at the label it tells you how much carbohydrate sugar and all that it's kind of like the same thing it's basically telling you what ingredients make your product and how much of it is which version now the next one i would call out which would be a growth area is as more people work from home a lot of people would start working from overseas because how different would it be for you to work from the us or australia or india as long as you can match the time zone it's going to bring questions around the fact that how do i make sure my employees still remain secure and can securely connect to our on-premise or our internal services even if they are based in a country which is not your home country that's going to get a lot of attention probably a lot of growth as well now the next one i would talk about is cloud-based there are going to be three major waves you would see in cloud. First one being the increase of multi-cloud. Yes, multi-cloud is here as, as a thing now, but I'm not just referring to multi-cloud as a context of just AWS, Google Cloud, and Azure, but I'm also referring to private cloud and some of the more obscure clouds like IBM Cloud, Oracle Cloud, which were hated on for a while, but these players have made a space for themselves in certain regions around the country and the world. For example, if you are in Saudi Arabia, you probably won't only have access to Oracle Cloud. You don't have access to AWS, Azure, Google Cloud. So strategically, well done to Oracle Cloud and IBM Cloud for finding such strategic positioning for themselves so they can stand out and still get a piece of the pie, which is large cloud pie. So this would be a trend to look out for the where either through acquisition or the company that you work for is expanding into certain regions where your popular cloud service provider may not be available and you have to move on to another cloud service provider, which you may have never worked with. That is another trend you would see. Another one for cloud would be data security. Now, kind of like identity, data is also something that's sprawling across. We have a lot of big data projects that have been going on for a few years, data and analysis project, people have realized data is important. However, the privacy officer as well as the chief data officer need to kind of talk and probably come out of the whole silos that have been existed for a while where when people talk about data, it is considered the problem of the chief data officer, but not considered anything to do with the privacy officer sometimes and sometimes it's vice versa. But there's a lot of permutation combination for this in a lot of companies. But what you realize is data security is a big problem because I can imagine if your company relies on say having PII or personal information of customers as a resource or and that's what you use to make money that being leaked is probably a really big problem so I'm pretty sure you'll figure out a way to find how do you secure data that is sprawling across your AWS Azure or Google Cloud or 
any other cloud environment. Last but not the least change within the cloud sphere of changes, you would notice is a lot of cloud native applications and cloud workload. A migration of say existing cloud workload, which used to be hosted on server, continues to be migrated to Kubernetes, containers, serverless. That's gonna continue and probably a decline of the need for patching, which is yes for a lot of security people, but also for a lot of people, what this means is you would find yourself using a lot of the cloud provided service, which is could be a certificate manager, it could be key management, it could be a lot more things which are primarily from the cloud service provider. So keep a watch out for that. That's what the changes would be from a cloud perspective that you need to look out for in 2022. Another growth area you would also notice is context-based. A lot of companies are going to move towards having some kind of context around all these products that they've connected because it's really interesting to see all these silos of information. Hey, this is what's happening with my cloud security posture manager. This is what's happening with my infrastructure score. This is what's happening with my application dependency. But without context, none of these actually are helpful because all you end up it is a bunch of false positives sometimes and sometimes just spending hours trying to find which is the most high priority item that you should be looking at in that hundred long list that's being created by this tool that you have in a particular section. So that would also get contextualized. Another thing that you might see is that's going to have some kind of context around it is the SaaS space. Yes, software as a service. There is a new product called SaaS PM or it sounds weird when I say it like that, but it's actually SaaS Security Posture Manager. SSPM is what I'm thinking of and Gartner has come out with the term Terminology, and now they're also recognizing that a lot of organizations are not only going into cloud, but are also really expanding like wildfire in SaaS application usage as well. Salesforce is probably the most common example. ServiceNow is another great example. If you have any, any system which is not hosted by you, most likely it's a SaaS service that's being hosted by someone else. And potentially going back to data, your data is being shared across with them. We should be looking at for some context around it. Now there are some expand areas that you might come across as well, where application security, we have been working for the past few years and I hate to say this, but I wish we were doing this in a better way where we are trying to have a parallel pipeline for security, not inside the development pipeline, but also having a separate pipeline. So if there's a change going from say development to production that goes straight through, and by the time your security pipeline kind of picks it up, it's not really, I guess it's too late because it's already in production. So in 2022, one of the growth areas would be application security pipelines would start to merge into an actual dev pipeline so that the changes are picked up pretty much when they hit the pipeline, not in a parallel pipeline. Now, the last two things I want to talk about in the growth space is cyber drills as well as disaster recovery. Thanks to Log4j, another thing that's come out is people have started rec rec recognizing the value of cyber drills and the disaster recovery exercise where they have to meet RTO and RPO standards. So that would also get a lot of popularity. Now, that's a growth section, but I want to talk about something exciting, which is going to be breaking new grounds in 2022. The first one being SPOM. I touched on this just before. Software bill of material, it's an ingredient list for what your software depends on at any given point in time. Second one being compliance standards would be updated and there would be a lot of changes which would either be based on data or cloud that you would see. There have already been announcements from ISO 27001 and probably some from SOC 2 as well where they're making massive changes in 2022. So look out for those compliance changes in 2022 for any compliance standard that's relevant for you. Third one being rise of the policy as code. A lot of people have been doing identity access management and authorization management as well as access control management. You using say a point in time information. Now we would be seeing a lot of policy as code. I'm going to use the example of OPA, OPA, Open Policy Agent. That is another example of policy as code that's being really spreading like wildfire in the cloud native community. And would you would see this in the cloud space as well quite often where the access of what an identity can do is being managed by policy as code. Another breaking ground in 2022 would be all security products would be forced to have an API and not be just click ops. What this means is you are a cloud security engineer or you have a team of engineers who are really smart security people as well but can also do automation they would not want to log into each one of those cloud security products or security products and find out what they should be monitoring or what they should be looking at so there would be a lot more products offering api services because 2021 is all about complaining 2022 is all about delivery so product companies would start delivering more apis security engineers can start automating some of that result and only filter things that they are relevant for them into the CICD pipeline or into a notification center. Now that's the breaking new ground. Let's get into the next, which is dead, hopefully in my opinion, dead in 2022. First one being, I'm going to start with static code analysis because I don't think it's going to exist beyond a certain point. It is slow. It doesn't work with cloud, comes up with a lot of false positive. As an industry, 
we have accepted that as a standard, but AST or asymmetric syntax tree is going to be one which is going to be standing out. There's a lot of examples for this out there already free open source, but I would recommend check out AST as a new way of identifying bugs all around your code because your bug bounty hunter or your pen tester found a particular way of exploiting a code and you can search that exact same thing across all your code and also prevent anyone from using that same kind of syntax in the future as well. Now that's what sounds like you should be doing as an analysis of your code, not trying to do static code analysis. But I will rest my case and I'll let you tell me in the comment that I am wrong, but I know I will be supported in this because as it stands, it needs to change. SAST is gonna die. Talking about dying, another thing that's gonna die is agent-based software for cloud. That model does not work. It is not flexible. That is not cloud native. If I have to change anything about a cloud service provider or anything else who uses an agent-based model, I would hate it for me to spend, I don't know, month, weeks or however long it would be trying to remove the agent from a server instead when I could just do an API call kind of product which allows me to switch them over in a day. That's kind of what the future needs, not more agent based. Security products that don't have an API available for security engineers to make a call and automate. They are going to die because what no one really wants to spend hours looking at multiple dashboards. Yes, I know everyone says you only have one dashboard, one dashboard to rule them all, but we all know that there are so many dashboards. So automation, and if you are a product which is not using API, you probably should look at having some APIs exposed so that secure engineers can automate and utilize the product that you have. Another point to talk about vendors is the way they bill in a cloud product, that's gonna change. Initially, they started off by billing based on resources. I think that model needs to change. Now, I don't know what that model is. I would love to hear from you in the comments what can that model be, but the whole model of, I would bill you on 100 resources. My resources are dynamic. So I may have 50 today, 100 tomorrow, but then back to 25 tomorrow, day after. Like, how do you kind of vouch for that? That's a very old school data center model to be about asking for per resources. There needs to be a better way to be able to do this. And I'm not going to debate about this. I'm just going to let everyone else debate about this in the comment or any other way. Last but not least, it's shifting left. I know we have been talking about shifting left for years now, since 2015 to be precise. I was doing DevSecOps talks in 2016, 2017. So we have been there, everyone gets it. We wanna shift left, either stick with DevSecOps or stick with shifting left. They're two different things. I think shifting left, people start using shifting left for everything. I don't know what that really means when it's not even a product. Why am I shifting left in a documentation? That's pretty much what I wanted to cover in this video. I hope you got some value out of it and what you should be looking out to add in your security roadmap for 2022 and beyond. If you feel I missed something, I would love to hear from you in the comments. If you like videos like this, I create videos like this every week based on cybersecurity, future tech. Hit the like button and follow or subscribe on LinkedIn, YouTube, wherever you are watching this. And I will see you in the next video. Peace.